I'm not a data scientist. I hope there are none in here so they won't call me out on any imperfections, but really what I'm going to talk about is applying some of the fundamentals of data science to marketing, and specifically digital marketing. And in, towards the end, we're going to go into some specific sort of what I would call pseudo examples of data science and how even the non-data scientist can uh, apply those to everyday digital marketing. A uh, couple of quick, well, first of all, are, is there anybody in the room who does consider themselves to be a data scientist or pseudo data scientist? Okay, good. I'm clear on that. <laughs> Nobody will call me out on any imperfections. Uh, next, one thing I always like to do in these presentations is make sure that I give you something to take back to the workplace that kind of checks a box for you. Um, so how many people in this room are here, not necessarily on their own accord, but th their boss, say, in some way or another, sent them here? Okay, good. So I'm going to help you guys out real quick, because I know that the last thing your boss probably said to you before you left was, make sure you come back with something that can immediately impact our bottom line and help us and, fi and fix this or fix that or help our marketing efforts. So I'll, I always aim to give you that one nugget that you can take back and say, yep, this is, this is something we can do immediately. So we'll get that at the end of the slideshow, but that's always an objective of mine. Okay, so um, LeadFerret is basically a data company. We provide B2B data, and we use a little bit of pseudo data science to help provide better data to our clients. But I'm not going to talk a whole lot about that. I'm going to talk a lot about what is data science. Um, and then give you some examples of stuff you can do to use data science in your marketing efforts. So let's see how this works next. Okay, so what is data science? Uh, it's one of those buzzwords a lot of people have heard, most people don't understand. And as we're going to find out, it's not that easy to define, and that's probably why there are a lot of misconceptions about it. Um, so Wikipedia, we all use Wikipedia to find out what something is, right? They define data science they say data science employs techniques and theories drawn from many fields within the broad areas of, get ready for this, mathematics, statistics, operations research, information science, computer science, wait, there's more, including uh, signal processing, probability models, machine learning, statistics learning, data mining, databases, data engineering, pattern recognition and learning, Visualization, predictive analytics, uncertainty modeling, data warehousing, data compression, computer programming, artificial intelligence, and high-performance computing. Uh, right? That's usually I go to Wikipedia to try to find a succinct definition of something, and I was pretty shocked actually to see such a non-succinct definition. And it's like no wonder people are confused about data science if that's what Wikipedia says data science is. It basically says that not only did that person not have the same fifth grade teacher as me because they would definitely not have allowed that as a one continuous sentence, that is the definition of a run-on sentence, but they also uh, were not looking for a very succinct answer as well. Um, so here's another definition that is widely used in presentations like this talking about data science, uh, so I couldn't buck that trend and not include it. But uh, a man named Drew Conway, who's the author of a book called Machine Learning for Hackers and a co-founder of a company called Datakind, uh, came up with this visual definition that basically says a data scientist is, has hacking skills, uh, substantive experience, math and statistic knowledge, and if you have all those things together, you have the skill set to be a data scientist. Still not really clear, in my opinion, what exactly a data scientist is or what they do. So let's look at comparative definitions. People like to say, well, it's like this, but this. Uh, so business intelligence is querying past data, while data scientists, science is using data from the past and present to build models or uh, that predict or affect the future it, within a scientific framework. So a scientific framework, um, I'll get to in a second, but another thing that probably the best definition I could find that for a succinct answer is data scientists ask what if questions and then answer them and observe and measure patterns all within data. That's really what they do, what if, and then use data to try to substantiate an answer. Uh, okay, so 
That's where we're talking about what is data science. Now, what do data scientists actually do? What makes somebody a data scientist? So they use a scientific approach to refine big data into products, intelligence, and, and action. And uh, most people remember the scientific method, right, from your uh, seventh grade science fair project. And this is not unlike that. This is a scientific approach and methodology similar to the one that you all learned when you did your science, seventh grade uh, science fair project. And hopefully, yours was better than this. I don't think there's a lot of science behind this one or this one. But yeah, you guys all remember the hell of seventh grade science <laughs> fairs, right? Uh, so this is a good, this is actually another uh, bite that is used in a lot of these types of presentations about data science. And this is, I'm not sure who this guy Josh Willis is, but he basically said, a data scientist is a person who's better at statistics than a software engineer, and better at software engineering than a st statistician. So it's kind of a combination of statistician, software engineering, using, able to use the data and understand it statistically. Um, so we took the data in our database, and we thought, well, what if we used a little bit of pseudo data science to mine our data and try to determine what skill sets a data scientist actually possesses? Um, and this is what we came up with. So we're looking at the frequently, the frequency per 1,000 social profiles with data scientist as a title. And we found that the most common skills that they possess was data mining, second data analytics, uh, or data analysis, machine learning, Python, so programming language is the fourth, uh, statistics is the fifth, SQL, another language is uh, sixth, uh, analytics, Java program. So you can see this is actually, this is real data. I think there were about 50,000 data scientist profiles that we looked at that tells us that in fact a data scientist is that combination of statistics, mathematics, analysis, and software engineering. Um, so what is big data? That's, people always love when a definition includes another word that you don't really fully understand, and usually the definition of a data scientist includes big data, and people go, oh, okay, well, what, what exactly is big data? Now, now that I uh, have this definition of data scientist, it always in, it's, includes a word that I also don't fully know the definition of. So what is big data? Um, Big data is, it's not just about the size of data, and because all data scientists will say, well, I work with big data to draw conclusions, make predictions, and formulate actions. Uh, it's not just about the size of the data, it's also, it is about the size, which is the volume of data, but it's also about the variety of data, so it's pulling together disparate data sources and data that's in different formats, and that's where a lot of the programming component of data scientists comes in. Um, it's also about the velocity of data, how quickly it's moving. One definition that I found that I really like is uh, big data in its purest state is like noise, everywhere at once, uh, never at rest, and continuously moving very fast. Um, so now let's get into some examples of applying data science. And I'm gonna start with something that maybe aren't marketing related so that you have a better idea of what using data science how data science is used in the real world, and then I'll move into some that are very marketing specific, and then we're gonna go through kind of an actual pseudo data science uh, exercise that we did internally at LeadFerret. So examples of data science at work. So in 2009, Google used data science to predict which regions of Mexico are at the highest risk of Ebola. If you guys remember in 2009, there was a bit of an Ebola scare. So this is really cool, they were actually able to take search activity from within Mexico, break it down by region, and that if they had, a, wherever they had high concentration of people searching for flu-related terms, like uh, symptoms of the flu, or what to do if you, have, or if you have body aches and stuff like that, they were actually able to, from that search activity, determine which regions were most likely to have an upcoming potential Ebola outbreak. Uh, that's data science at its best, uh, being able to predict something based on huge volumes of data such as that. And also, Google's uh, page ranking is really pure data science. They're using 
uh, very complex algorithms and backlinks, and that's a whole other presentation by itself. But Google is sort of one of the founders of the, some of the most complex forms of data science on the web. Um, and their ad targeting is also a good example of data science at work. Uh, online, now I'm starting to move more into the, uh, towards marketing. People you may want to connect with. You may want to connect with this person on a social network. Data science is behind that, determining who, based on your connections, based on your geographic location, a bunch of where, where you work, where you have work, is going to determine who you might want to connect with. Sometimes you see those things popped up and you're like, it's kind of scary that they knew that. Like, how would they know that I might want to connect with that person? That I, and they're using data science to determine that. Uh, you might also like this product on Amazon, Netflix, etc. There's data science behind that, determining which products uh, um, you're most likely to like based on all the activity that they're collecting on you. So if this pops up under, you might like this product, I'm not sure what you've been buying on Amazon, but <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, not sure what that says about you. Okay, so now let's get into a few more examples, video games, data science is heavily used in video games, especially real-time and online and group video games. Uh, voice recognition, fraud detection, airline route planning uses data science, price comparison sites use a ton of data science, delivery logistics, uh, self-driving cars and robots are something that will heavily use data science in the near future. Um, so, of course you want your robot doesn't want to have to drive his own car, so he, your robot will need a self-driving car also. Um, okay, so let's get into the heart of it, data science in marketing. Um, you can use data science in marketing to predict, predict which content is more likely to resonate. Um, you can use data science to predict which social networks your prospects are more likely to be listening on. Uh, simple examples of these things are basically looking at what has worked in the past. Now, typically in data science, you're using huge volumes of data and you're using layered data. So you're layering one pattern on top of another, on top of another, looking for intersections, th things like that. Uh, predict which offers will work with which customers. Uh, Pay-per-click optimization, you can apply data science there. Uh, retargeting optimization. Churn prediction is another area you can use data science. Email campaign optimization. Uh, custom messaging, so you can, uh, one quick example on this that I saw recently where somebody was using data science effectively on me was another conference that I attended. Um, I actually got an email from the conference and the subject line said, these people will be attending the conference, will you? And it was all people that I had some sort of connection with through work or through a social network or something like that. And they had used data science to determine that and customize the subject line of that email um, to grab my attention. Whoa, I know all these names, I know these people. And that was no mistake. It wasn't just that they randomly hit people I knew. Um, and then within the body of the email, they actually listed all companies that I had some association with. Don't forget, you'll have the opportunity to see and meet with people from these great companies. And it was all companies that I knew, either through a past job or through a, uh, they you know, was connected with somebody at that company, or they were a partner of my company, or we were a partner of their company, something like that. Um, so that's a way that data science can be used in custom messaging. Uh, Timing of messaging, you know, time of day, time of week, time of month, time relative to a specific event. You can use data science to determine the optimal uh, timing of your message. And then the example that I'm going to go into in more detail is identifying patterns in customers and prospects, because that's really what we do at LeadThread, how we apply data science, um, and in all fairness, pseudo data science. Um, to find patterns within our clients' specific existing customer base as well as prospects and cross-match those two. So we're gonna go into that. Um, okay, so we start with a question and a hypothesis. Again, just like our seventh grade science project, we're very close to it. Uh, we compile data 
to test our hypothesis. And we maintain a control. If you remember, that was one thing seventh grade science teacher always preached to you, right? Control, control. You have to have that control. Otherwise, your statistics are completely in, invalid. Uh, then we're going to query the data. This is where some of the more software engineering type component comes in. Uh, then we're going to analyze the results, draw conclusions, and take action accordingly. Uh, tweak the whole process and start over. So we're going to walk through each of these steps. And again, disclaimer, this is pseudo data science. I'm simplifying it um, to, so that we can all apply it. Okay, so let's start with a question and hypothesis. So our question that we used at Lead Ferret, again, we sell data. Um, we use a lot of social information. We have, to date, uh, compiled and analyzed over a billion social profiles across four major networks, five major networks, and uh, we have this at our fingertips and can query this at any time and find all kinds of interesting st statistics. Um, so we're, the question we decided to ask is, are marketers that are using marketing automation software more likely to use Leadfair? And this will help us determine how we want to focus our own marketing efforts. And our hypothesis was yes, they are. Um, so first, the next step is to compile the data to test our hypothesis. So we compiled over 2 million profiles from LinkedIn, or 200 million, sorry, profiles from LinkedIn. Um, and we, within those 200 million, we identified marketing professionals by titles. This is part of the data compilation process. Uh, and we determined those using marketing automation based on page scans and social profile content. So you can look at most company's website, and if you look at the source code, and that's what we say when we talk about page scanning, we can see what technologies they're using, um, including many marketing automation solutions like HubSpot, Marketo, Acton, et cetera. Um, and then we can also look at their social profiles. If we see 20 people within one company that all say that they are an expert at Marketo, then we know that company is likely to be using that solution. And then we match those records to the lead ferret user base. So that's the compilation part. So now we have all our data ready to go or run, ready to run some queries. Uh, first, we got to have to set up our controls. So we first determine the likelihood of any of the 200 million individuals being a lead ferret user. So that's one control that we will have. Um, and then we forget, we determine that that's about 450 per million. So out of the 200 million, about 450 per million are already using Lead Ferret. Then we determine the likelihood of any marketer in the 200 million being a Lead Ferret user. This is a secondary control. Um, so there's 2.7 million marketers that we identified out of the 200 million profiles, um, which is about 12,000 per million. Or, and then we found about 12,000 of those per million use lead freight. You can see much, much higher than the 450. So already just being a marketer makes them much more likely to use lead ferret, um, which is a total of about 32,000 marketers in that subset using lead ferret. Okay, then we I wanted to identify patterns, uh, or, okay, sorry, that got a little bit out of order. Container controls. Oh, for some reason, that came. I'm just going to put it all on the screen since that one part came up. Okay, uh, so the next step is to query the data and analyze our results. So we determine the number of marketers using marketing automation, as I mentioned in the previous step during the data compilation. We found that out of the 2.7 million marketers that we identified, 1.05 million, we could identify not only that they were using marketing automation, but which marketing automation solution they were using. Then we deter next we want to determine the likelihood of any of those 1.05 million marketers uh, that use marketing automation using LeadFerret. We found that to be about 22,000 per million using LeadFerret, which is almost double the rate of marketers in general. Um, I'm actually going to go back real quick just so you guys can see this again. So out of the 2.7 million general marketers, 12,000 per million were using LeadFerret. Fast forward to the next slide. 22,000 per million that we could also identify as using uh, marketing automation 
were using lead ferret. So almost twice as likely within that pool to be using lead ferret if they were also using marketing automation. Um, I hope it's, I'm not making this too convoluted, but this is really, really simple sort of pseudo data science. And the conclusion from that is marketing using, marketers using marketing automation are more likely to, to use lead ferret. So the actions that we take is we now I, uh, identify marketers using marketing automation to target them more rigorously than we would just somebody with a marketing title in general. Um, so to tweak and start over, our next step is we're now looking to see if specific marketing automation solutions like Acton versus Marketo versus HubSpot uh, have a higher conversion or adoption rate of lead ferret than others. How, how many people were just totally lost in that whole example? How many versus got it a little bit? Okay. I'm glad I've asked that question as the negative. <laughs> who was totally lost? I said, who totally got it? I might get no hands also, right? Um, how are we doing on time? Good as in 12 minutes. Okay. We're going to have a lot of time for questions and answers then, I guess. Um, and the premise behind tweaking and starting over is that good data science, just like good data, should never end. There's no end to it. It's not a finite process where you start and stop. You always are taking that one conclusion and looking to draw more conclusions and looking to continue to substantiate that conclu conclusion because trends by nature change over time. Um, okay, so I think we have about 10 minutes left. Um, any specific questions about that, points of clarification, I'd be happy to go back to any particular slides. Um, who feels like they know a little bit more about data science now and how they might apply it to marketing than they did prior to the presentation? Okay. Good. A few people at least. That's all we need, right? One change one mind at a time as an accomplishment. Okay, questions? Anyway, yeah. Right. Right. So I initially would, if I were bringing it back to my manager or boss, I would, I would present it not necessarily as a cost component or as an acquisition of any software or a new team member, like, you know, you might at some point consider adding a data scientist to your team, if that makes sense. But I would look at it more as a mindset. Like, let's make data science as part of our marketing a part of every discussion and every meeting. So we've all had those marketing meetings where we talk about, um, you know, how do we want to approach this? What do we want? To, who do we want to approach? Where do we want to spend money? What kind of ads do we want to run? What kind of data do we want to acquire? What does our target uh, audience look like? What's you know the another thing that people like to do right now, which oftentimes has a lot of data science behind it, is creating a persona. What's the persona, or what are the multiple personas of our typical user or desired user or client or prospect? Um, and instead of, you know, whoever's on your team sitting around a table and saying, yeah, I think it's this and I think it's this, um, what I'm saying is go back to that team and say, hey, how about we use some data science to try to determine that instead of just getting the opinions of the people in this room and, getting the, and maybe asking our sales team what they find when they get on the phone and talk to people. Like, let's, let's actually all become a little more educated on data science, um, maybe reach out to a third party for some help with the complex mathematics and statistics part of it, maybe consider some sort of business intelligence software, maybe consider a, a company like LeadFred that can use data science to help us uh, define and pinpoint our target audience. But at the very least, let's all learn a little bit more about data science and, empl and employ some if nothing else, pseudo data science methodologies to answering those questions with data behind it, not just a few people's opinions. So I would say that's really, if you're not, 
if data science isn't a word that comes up frequently in your marketing meetings um, right now, then the first step is to change that and say, let's, let's not just speculate, let's use real science behind it. Any, any other questions, comments, feedbacks? Anybody want to see another slide over again? Yes. So Leadfert is, and I purposely try to make this presentation not just about Leadfert, but really about giving you guys some value. But uh, Leadfert is a web-based data management platform um, that's connected to a database of 30 million companies and contacts um, where you can build lists of uh, prospects that you can load into things like your CRM, email marketing solution, stuff like that. Um, we also do a lot of custom data build projects for our clients where we use a lot of data science or pseudo data science to identify um, likely prospects. Uh, but yeah, at the, I would say really we're sort of an evolved version of what you might have used in the past and called a list broker or something like that. We also have a self-service data management platform. And another way to look at it is if you've ever searched a social network like LinkedIn and said, oh man, these prospects are perfect. I wish I could just grab all these with their phone numbers and email addresses and start giving them to my sales team or start going after them myself. That's essentially what lead, you could also see LeadFerret as that. So we're very tied to social media as well. Everything is derived from social profiles. <laughs>